Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Urbane Legends, the internet podcast about urban legends and other such topics, which is the largest by volume. Ooh, I am a boast. There is a huge boast. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Chris Flynn, and I've just eaten a conference pear. And with me, as always, is Mr. Neil Herbert. Hi, Neil. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Stop there, Chris. Mm. I think you might have an announcement for the ladies and gentlemen. I do. Well done. Well spotted, sir. Uh, yes, so uh, I said this at the tail end of last week's episode, but uh, I should have done it at the start, but I'm not going to go in and change stuff, um, you know, because it's not my style. But we uh, have been... Just don't refer to it the week after. That would probably be the thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it nice well, and slick. We have been uh, ranked on a uh, internet podcast ranking website as the eighth best urban legends podcast going, and that's by what an accolade. It's a hell of an accolade. I tell you what, I'm not aiming for. They said it couldn't be done. They said it shouldn't be done. I'm not aiming We're for right number on one of those counts. I'm not aiming for number one because uh, we don't take it as seriously as others. Right? That's no. fair enough. I understand that. But Neil, I'm going to do whatever, whatever. Done it, mummy and daddy's money. You know, it yeah. takes to get to number seven. To get to number three, Ooh, Neil, okay. and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Neil, think about the worst thing that you can think of that someone would do to get to number three. It's yeah. worse. It's worse than that. So I'm just putting people on notice, yeah. and all the people who are between seven and. Three, you're on notice because I am willing to do what it takes. Yeah, it might get... be something you want to avail yourself of there, or just be aware that what he's what he's prepared to do. Um, so and what's what's that website, Chris? It is podcast.feedspot.com, and that has rankings of all manner of subjects of Ooh. podcasts. Uh, I go on there sometimes to have a little look see, which is why I knew about this. And um, if you want to look at our particular bit, it's podcast.feedspot.com forward slash urban underscore legends underscore podcast. Should you wish to listen to any of the podcasts that are seven to three before, perhaps they mysteriously disappear off the airwaves. So just uh, just a warning there and a shout out. You know, nice of them to do it. It was judged by panel, apparently. Um Wood panel. And look one. Um, no, fair so, enough. Uh, yeah, little, you know, uh, that's nice of them. Uh, it's nice that um, we are finally getting the recognition we sorely deserve. Oh, yeah, we're stuck in somewhere. Um, no, that's good. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Oh, yeah, while we're at it, we was mentioned it at the end. You know, if you if you listen and enjoy it, why not leave a review? We know there's a pretty listeners out there. Yeah. Don't get many reviews. We know, we can yeah. see. We can see in the analytics. I might not be able to know where your house you is, but I know, what, at the start I know, what, at the end, so I know what city you're in. And, you know, if you don't start leaving reviews or positive comments, then, you know, maybe I've got a bit of time on my hands at the moment. That's all I'm saying, Neil. That's all I'm well, saying. That's boring, isn't it? Let's move on to something else. Boring. Uh, yeah, what so, we don't normally do, like, shit up front. I know, I know. We don't. Well, it. it's been nearly three years, so it's probably all right that we it's do it once. the move for me, Chris. Yeah, me too. Now. I've lost all my juice. Just, you wrap it up there. If you could leave a five star review, listeners, that'd be great. Yeah. Bye. Well yeah. Seven um, out of ten or forty or whatever. Yeah. Tell you what, I found out recently, Neil. You know the town of East Grinstead, which is just north of where we live, right? Mm-hmm. Not well, only, not intimately, but yeah, I've been, yeah, it's I've been there a few times. Okay. Not only is it the world headquarters of Scientology, famously. Yeah, I've heard that. And Tom Cruise, uh, he actually bought, he spent the second lockdown in a four million pound house that he bought near there. Interesting. Which is he that, then, is which that he, true? yeah, it is true. Yeah. yeah. And which he then sold to Peter Andre. Nice. <laughs> wow. God, rich buying and selling the houses. But the thing is, like, there's, it turns out there's, a, which I didn't realize, there's actually like a few weird religious things around East Grinstead. Okay. So there's a massive Mormon temple, which is unusual for this country. So what's with all of these American religions coming over and we're all, we're all nice CNA? I mean, I was, I was brought up Roman Catholic, but... Well, the other two are more along those lines. You're a filthy atheist. So, uh, so apparently, 
part of it is the fact that it's on the Greenwich Main Line. So you've got east one side, west the other. So it's like in the centre. Uh, but also apparently something about ley lines. So. I mean, Scientology's got a bit of a grip on this country, but um, Mormonism... This country? I mean, not massive, but it's not... No, I mean, I've met one Scientologist ever. Yeah, how I many Mormons have you met? Huh? From England. It's Mormonism, um, really. It's not, I mean, I don't know. Do they... They evangelize. evangelize. Well, so what used to happen is, yeah, they do, well, they used to they used to do it in like it's, the eighteenth um, nineteenth century. Some some geezer was in a. He found he found the writings of yeah. uh, some it's extra Bible stuff. He yeah. found it where you would in America. An angel buried put it out to him on, on um, gold on gold plates, which he then yeah. uh, lost. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about. Don't worry about what they are. Don't right. worry about that. Yeah, just listen to what I'm saying. Understand. Just. Sh- um, but a lot of Mormons sort of came over to England to try and do it, to try and do it. But a lot of them, spread the religion, yeah. But a lot of them <laughs> then got uh, de-Mormonized by being here and going to the pub and stuff. Oh, so. fuck that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know um, that much about Mormons, actually, apart from the sort of I know the creation myth. Is it Joseph Smith, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously, sure, yes. this sounds slightly dodge, but, you know, fair enough. Hey, well, no. Religion, is yeah, I mean, it's religion. They're not... Yeah. Blah. Um, but, yeah, they're massive in America. Crazy. Um, Salt yeah, didn't Lake think City. Sort of, yeah, Salt Lake City, obviously, the main main home. But, yeah, I didn't think they'd sort of... It was, was sort of had spread around into Europe that much. Where Everyone's trying everything, world, aren't they? they? They're trying it. Scientology trying is the new groovy religion. And also, it's not a religion. It's scienti- scientifically proven. It is scientifically know? proven. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been on... Have yeah. you ever had your teeth and tested? No, I so. think. Do you know what? I think it's up the wizard. I think it's up the wizard. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I bet they are. I can yeah. tell. Right. OT twelve. I, I can tell because you're so negative, Neil. Yeah. And do you know why things don't things aren't going person, well for you? Yeah, it's because you're in a pre- you've got an oppressive personality. Up to the arsehole. Yeah. <laughs> you've got nothing. You're fucking ninety percent thing yeah. and ten percent cunt. <laughs> That's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, do you want to join? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like a hard sell. I'm, I'm on board. Um, but there's also, right, so the, you've got those two. You've also... <laughs> have you ever heard of um, Opus Dei? Opus, Opus Dei, Dei, yeah. They're like a weird yeah. right-wing again. I think that this is more kind of with, with the Vatican, but it's... A, yeah, but they I sell mean, flagellate. Yeah, they yeah. Wear like, they wear, like, vests with they're pins in They're a section in the Catholic stuff. Church, aren't they, I believe? Yeah, yeah they've got a base there. In mm. East Grinstead and the Rosicrucians. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah who were all around these allegedly all sort of tied in with supposedly the Templars and all that nonsense. Oh. A lot of conspiracy theories. Because yeah, Opus Day as well, doesn't that that crappy Dan Brown novel? That was yeah, the, that's who the monk your monk from. fellow was an Opus Day mm. fellow, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So they've all got bases around these Grinsteads. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. A crazy, quite boring little town just outside of Brighton. But you're near enough to London and all the rest of it, but it's well, not too Gatwick expensive. Airport, isn't that probably? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's that nice as well. near Gatwick Airport. I mean, you can you know, buy just up hop somewhere on, nice and big, hop on the bus, you know, yeah. fly in from the Vatican. It's secluded. Yeah, want to come over? Put your hair short, whip, on, whip some monks. Yeah. yeah, why not? Eh? Uh, so that was, um, yeah, so that was quite interesting. <laughs> um, well, there you go. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else to say now. Not more compelled to go to East Princeton than was before, I'll be honest with you, but it's interesting to know they were out there. I went there Do to you go... Think to... the four groups get together for another party sometimes? Mm, well, I Probably don't know. Not. Scientologists aren't very inclusive, are they? They're not. They're not keen on, yeah, hanging out with other faith, perhaps. Yeah. Rosicrucians and Opus Day, maybe. Yeah, I reckon they get on. Plotting away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, but yeah, just sorry, just so weird. And it doesn't really, yeah, it's very difficult to get to on the train. Maybe that's part of it as well. Yeah, I, I can say, I, I, I don't I don't even know that I've been to East Princeton, to be honest with you. I mean, it's it's what you'd expect. Yeah. It's like, a, you know, a couple of shops, of you know, streets of shops, and then just suburbia. Yeah, quite suburban and kind of, yeah, like less pretty Tunbridge Wells or something. It's probably only or a more pretty Crawley. Yeah. Except it's not as big as Crawley or anything. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's some if you want to uh, if you want to go and spy on any of those people, then uh, East Grinstead. You can hang you around can, East Grinstead, see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you can get get all four. Yeah. So um, the full four of them. Neil, religions of the world box. 
So this week, we are going to be looking at a monster which was spotted um, in a place called Lytham, um, which is sort of the, the southern outskirts of Blackpool, which is, of course, Britain's answer to Las Vegas. Now, I hope this is going to be better than the last monster. Was it Montauk? It was just like a dead badger or something. Oh, the Montauk I monster. That photo of, yeah. Mm. No, there is no photo of this one. It's it's okay, it's so eyewitness it, it, it accounts. No, you, this is the Thetans talking. Slowly. This isn't you. Yeah. If you'd simply give me a few hundred quid, I could help yeah. you out. Be a bit simply more blackmail positive. you for a bit. Into yeah. Just trust. send me some pictures of yourself. <laughs> more? Yeah, more. Not comfortable with this, Chris. I told you. Well. And you signed the you signed a contract, yeah. So you know, I can get I can get my my lawyers involved, and as you know, people from my particular church have got quite a few contacts in the old legal community. So think on. So the pool with us, Neil. Have you been to Blackpool? Blackpool? No. Again, heard of it. Never been up there. No. Yeah. No. I'm not very well uh, travelled as comes our country. Well, it's too expensive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's too I mean, expensive. I've, been, I've been further north. I've been to Edinburgh, but um, yeah, I've been to Wales, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I'd like to go around the north a bit, actually. Yeah, it's just, well, yeah, because price of trains and price of accommodation. I had a look at how much, because I was thinking like York would be a nice place to go because yeah, it's, got, it's yeah. got a really pretty medieval city centre yeah. and it's a, it's a Viking city originally. Yeah, it's got a lot of history. Got a lot of history, and I was going, oh, like I might go out there for a weekend or whatever. And I looked how much it costs on a train, and it was like two hundred ninety quid return or something. I was like, I'll probably just go to fucking Paris. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's shocking. I mean, you must be able to get cheap tickets at some point. Nah. But the thing is, like, when you add in accommodation and stuff, yeah, then yeah, you're talking yeah. about European city breaks. Yeah, because it's quite expensive, isn't it? Yeah, you could literally go and do a so long weekend I'm... in Paris for that. Yeah, like why? Yeah, um, if you, I think you probably yeah. I don't know. If you drove, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, I, I went to Blackpool when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, I was very impressed because there's a thing called the Blackpool Lights, the Illuminations, yeah, the Illuminations, and it's basically like a mile and a half, two mile strip mm-hmm. of uh, loads of um, lit up it's shit. The Vegas of the North, yeah. And I was really impressed because uh, the, because it was the eighties, so we were in a B and B. Yeah, and uh, I remember out of the, out of the if you climbed on the toilet and looked out the window, you could see the Ghostbusters illumination, and I was very Ooh. impressed by that. Uh, but yeah, it's got Blackpool Tower, which is Britain's answer to the Eiffel Tower, one twentieth of the size. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not quite as impressive. Let's be honest, and you've not sort of got the. Uh... Yeah, the Trocadero and all of that. It would be interesting to go, oh, I don't know. The big I gardens. Think... No, I'd, I'd go. I'd, to be honest, I'd go out of the pool. I, mean, I was... Um, Not ballroom dancing. I've been, I've been to Liverpool. No, um, Blackpool, yeah, they've got the ballroom dancing. But I was reading an article. Well, you know, arcade, they've got a lot of arcade machines, big yeah. gambling. But the thing is, we don't... Because you can gamble anywhere in this country, sort of casinos it's aren't not, a big yeah, thing. It's not a big thing. Um, but yeah, no, I was reading some of the um, Blackpool. I'm gambling so... right now. A lot of them are saying, because there's so many hen days and stag days and all the rest mm. of it, it's becoming more and more difficult. You know, people who just live there generally. Like, you get that little bit with Brighton, don't you? You sort of, um, mm. I, I'm fine, you know, obviously it's tour, you know, there's plenty of tourists and stuff and let them come and enjoy the place for the weekend and what have you. But um, yeah, we, certain parts of Queen's Road and West Street. Well, some people call Brighton stuff. Blackpool for cunts, don't they? So, well, yeah. I've, heard, I've heard that from a northerner before. It's, it's clearly got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, they? absolutely. Yeah. 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 It was Andy Dawson, the comedian and podcaster, who said that <laughs> <laughs> before coming down to do a show in Brighton. Yeah, before, yeah cheeky fuck. I've gone been down to see him at the Comedia. Yeah, I know. Well, we both quite, have, haven't we? He quite likes it now he's been here. Yeah, no, fair enough. Typical. Oh, because yeah, he came down with Bob Mormer as well, didn't we? We missed that. Yeah. Um, but they did the, um, what you call it? Athletic Men's podcast as well. Mm hmm. It's all about podcasts. Indeed. Uh, um, so, the Beast of Lytham. Podcasting. Anyway, yeah, no, let's get on to <laughs> So, Beast of Lytham, uh, I'm going to read, unfortunately, initially from the Mail Online, 
which, uh, like we were saying about The Guardian online, like basically The Guardian is a newspaper. It was originally The Manchester Guardian, not The London yeah. Guardian. Um, and now it's like a big website in America. The Mail Online, which is a horrible right-wing rag of a newspaper that used to be owned by fascists, uh, is the biggest online uh, news website in the world. So that's good yeah, to know, isn't it? Did. Hey, it's, been, it's been a long time since they backed Oswald Mosley, so. <laughs> Lord uh, Lord so, The Beast of Lytham, and this is by uh, Jaya Narin. And, I think um, the website's a bit different from the, well, not the, <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, it's just as much traffic as you can get. Yeah. They've, they've been very successful. It's a lot of clickbaity. Yeah. And this is from May 2005. Long time ago, Neil. 2005? Mm. Yeah. Is that 19 years ago? Yeah. As time Do you know what? It's that by. thing. I, it, I always get that. Do you find yourself like forgetting to write 2024? No, I've been quite good this time. Yeah. But normally I do. But yeah, January is always a bit, I was, I was this weird surprise about the coming of a new year. It's, um, but yeah, I keep finding myself putting 23 into sort of some document at work and I'm trying to remind myself it's 24. Yeah. Oh, you That's say very that. uninteresting observations. But I think what you're doing is trying to trick the I'm auditors. Trying to go back in past. I think you're trying to trick the auditors to backfill to backfill the documentation for all of the raises you've been giving yourself. Yeah. Just in case anyone checks that that stuff I claim to do in my performance review. That's it. So are you ready? I've never been readier. <laughs> Uh, so, some say it looks like the Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh, Others mention good. the cartoon character Wiley Coyote. Less good. <laughs> but apparently, the beast that has brought terror to an upmarket town and caused an anxious resident an- caused anxious residents to look over their shoulders at night. So, where are we in the world, Chris? Lytham, just south of Blackpool. Ah, okay, so that was one of the Blackpool reference. Yes, I did say okay, that so, at the time. Yeah, that was one of my periodic... I think um, we're going to have to take you back to those, of consciousness. Those, those active listening classes, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Cynics it's claim... blackouts. <laughs> it's just having another one of my blackouts. It's just, it's just yeah. occur in between the first minute and the last minute of a podcast. Look, if you can't do a podcast with someone who has intermittent mini strokes, then, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I don't know why I'm here. Well, podcast partner, that's why. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, cynics claim it's just a product of fertile imaginations or one on two gin tonics too many. Oh. But more than 20 sightings have been reported in the last few weeks, leading to a local illustrator compiling an artist's impression. The 20 in weeks, that's yeah. interesting. I wonder whether this is carried on, given that it's nearly 20 years old. We don't know how long these bad boys live for. That's true. Amateur photographers, meanwhile, have been descending on the area, hoping to get a shot. Dubbed the Beast of Green Drive, the mysterious creature has been spot roaming in the thick woodland at a beauty spot. Oh, that's nice. It's about as tall as a collie dog with huge ears, a mm-hmm. large mouth, and a lolloping gait. The peculiar animal has caused a frenzy of chatter in the normally sedate Lytham St. Anne's Lancashire. It's sounding a bit more like wolf-like, but smaller. Or maybe a hyena or something. Wolf don't lollop. Well, no, all right, the lolloping, I don't know. The creature, according to witnesses, is seen mainly in the largely wooded area of Green Drive, where there's plenty of bush and scrub to conceal a large animal. It's a big fox riding a badger, I reckon. I think you've, I think you've yeah, already nailed it. Case closed. Right, Case scores. closed. <laughs> Sandra Sturrock, who was walking her dog when she came face to face with the beast, said... Ooh. I caught sight of something large ahead of us. It was like a large collie, light in colour, with large sticking up ears. It was watching me and my dog. I stood completely still for several minutes, trying to see it more closely. I called my dog and put him on the lead and slowly inched towards the animal to get a better look, but it ran off. 
Then I went to where it had been, and my dog went mad, sniffing around the area. She added, I've never seen anything like this before. I lived in Cheshire for ten years and frequently saw foxes and old deer, but they usually disappeared quite quickly and not remain just watching you. Foxes have become more tame over the recent years, haven't they? They used to just run away. You'd rarely see a fox, whereas they tend mm. to. I mean, so, don't get me wrong, I don't think they'd bite you coming up too close. But uh... So they have, and like I've said on this podcast before, I think foxes will be the next pet. Like that kind of, you know, like dogs for pets, and then cats kind of. You know, domesticate foxes. I think fox will domesticate themselves. Okay. I think they'll just start coming in people's houses, and then like then well, they'll if have... I have a cup of tea. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Hello, Mister Fox. Here. Do you mind if I have a bake? Well. Yeah. Um, but what I've noticed is they're a lot more around during the day. They never used to be around during the day, and they are now. And I think that's basically because of COVID, because there was no one about, and they got used to coming out during the day. Yeah. You see them all the time now, like on my roads, just wandering about during the day, foxing foxing about. But this is what happens, because all the hippies get rid of their fox hunts. Yeah, although... Yeah. They were swarmed with There them. was recently horrible footage of a fo- illegal fox hunt where they were torturing the fox, and obviously none of the, none, they'll get a fine, but no-one will get arrested despite the fact they're breaking law, because they all donate to the Conservative Party. I would imagine, Neil. I'll tell you what, talking about the law, mm. I uh, I got into a, like a, an altercation with my neighbour before we started podding. So, okay. so, you know, for about a year, the flat above me, they were knocking down walls and all that kind of stuff. And, they, mm-hmm. and I, I was no longer allowed to speak to the guy because I was just going to wring his neck. Um, <laughs> I... Um, so that stopped, but then the neighbour to the side of me started doing all this stuff. And it's a Sunday, so it's illegal to do any building work on a Sunday, right? Against the law. If it was someone just putting up your sh- their shelves or something, I don't really care, but they're doing heavy building work in there. Okay. And I've got to do my recording, man. I've got a pod. You know, I've got to wear a, I've got to wear a crust with yeah. this incredibly lucrative pastime. Oh, in lucre, yeah. So, um, yeah, I went... I, I say altercation, I went round and banged on the door and went, yeah, you need to stop because I've got stuff to do and it's a Sunday. And he went, yeah, all right. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> so it wasn't much oh, of an altercation. So, so far, so, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, right, it's like well, they know they shouldn't be doing it on a Sunday and it's people's quality of life. And it's like, yeah, but quality of life, what's the return on investment on quality of life? I've got to get this uh, ready for, for sale. It's like you're not. They know it's illegal, but because we don't have a police force anymore, although they wouldn't come for noise stuff. Well, anyway. no, they wouldn't come for that kind of thing. Well, they yeah. wouldn't come for a, if you got stabbed, you'd just get a police number, wouldn't you? Probably these days, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was annoying. Are you proud of me that I didn't go and punch him or anything? He was quite a little guy, to be honest, and he had like weird. Teeth, it so. seems like the situation was reasonably amicably resolved. It's quite grown up of me, wasn't yeah. it? One should you know shouldn't shouldn't need to get any more than that really. I was thinking of throwing a tin of soup on him like the protesters, but um, yeah, I think that escalates things. Well, and also with the cost of living and stuff, I can't oh, yeah. really afford to be afford to. chucking soup yeah. around. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That 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 might have to sustain me. Um, so, Willie Davidson. Oh, what's his name? Fifty nine, and I'm hoping he's a DJ. Oh yes. Uh, uh, no, he's a painter and decorator. He said, Fair enough. I was playing bowls near Green Drive when I heard a snarl behind me. Oh, level <laughs> hell beast emerged from shadow. <laughs> what the fuck do you want? I said, Tim. <clears throat> Back to where it is with you, lad, said I. <laughs> None of you my grin round here. <laughs> I don't need no Cerberus <laughs> turning up and stopping me bowls game. Um, he says, it was like a monster out of Doctor Who, and it needs tracking down. Very, very poorly put together. <laughs> it was barely believable. It was like some clean film that had been sprayed green, and then the it was like they were trying to do monster. one of. It was like they were trying to do one of those American sci-fi TV shows, but with one fiftieth of the budget. budget yeah. <laughs> Another woman who didn't want to be named. 
smart. So she's not in it for the money. No. <laughs> Sad. In it for the glory. <sighs> Voice now. I was walking along the drive when I saw the fields. I saw in the fields alongside. I saw it in the fields alongside. <laughs> I have no idea what it was. I can tell it was the size of a Labrador, but it looked more like a hare. I mean, these are some... It quite... can't have been either. It was surreal. So it's got, like, big hair ears. It's got, that's the ears, isn't it? It's got... Okay, yeah, I was going to say the hair thing. <laughs> Not like hair as in on your head, like... The... No, no, I've got H-A-E. The rabbit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, as in, yeah. Is there a meth problem in this part of the world? Meth problem? Yeah. There are some quite... Um, there are some quite run-down areas of Blackpool. I know that some of the sort of poorest areas in the UK are in Blackpool, mm. but this is the rich Lytham and well, Anne's is, area. No. Oh, okay, no, this is, okay. This is not where they're going to be taking meth. They'll be banging back cocaine, sure. Well, one too many GNTs, as we said earlier. One too many yeah. GNTs. <laughs> <laughs> so, one theory is that it could be uh, Munt Jack Deer. One of the last remaining from a herd bought to Lytham Mall by a local squire over a century ago. Ooh. Illustrate. Are you spelling Jack Deer? I think we need to, we need to check this. M U N T J A C. M U N T J A C. Yeah, Munt Jack. What type? Neil, use your wonderful flowery language to describe it. Than what this deer looks like to you. It's furry. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's actually it's quite odd. It doesn't look like a collie dog, I will say that. But there's so to the side it's very much like a deer, but no, it's got sort of very small, weird little antlers. So it's kind of like a little I would say oh, it's right, like yeah, almost yeah. like a Shetland pony version of a deer. It looks like it's, it's like got nostrils between its eyes. Yeah, it's got kind of like a little bit of a devil face going on because he's got these two. He's got these two horns that look like... Um, also known as the rats. barking deer. Yeah, they're like little devil horns. Um, but, yeah, big ears. Um, yeah, and then he's kind of like, yeah, two ridges with the sort of... You know, where would be antlers coming out the top, but they're just kind of like little horns. And, and it's got yeah, the... Like a ridge on its skull as well, yeah. Yeah, so kind of like um, like a Star Trek alien. Yeah, that is an odd-looking little creature. Um Okay, yeah, if you see one of those, that would be a bit out of the ordinary. I don't know that. So that's one theory. Illustrator, yeah. Sam Sheeran. I don't know if he's anything to do with Ed Sheeran. But what I, will, what I will say about Ed Sheeran is he pays his taxes. Does he? So oh, good, good luck. He you. does. He pays, his ta- he pays full taxes in this country, no dodgy accounting. He just pays it. Good lad. So Ed Sheeran... Came up with his drawing after speaking yeah. to several witnesses. In between making more albums based around mathematical symbols. I assume he's moved on to like square roots and stuff now. I don't get it. Yeah, no, neither do I. No, what? no, I don't get it. I don't get what you said. His albums are called things like plus and multiply and are they? divide and yeah. conquer. Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't know that. No, they're all done after like some mathematical symbols. I know you're more of a sheer head than I am. <clears throat> yeah, I'm. Love the ES. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I don't you know do. how I know that. I don't, I don't know about two of his songs, but. Yeah. Cool um, Girl, was it? And uh, Shape of You, I think, was another one. Anyway, mm. yeah, I'm not free up. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. What are, you tr- are you trying to. Uh, you're learning all these to try and reach the kids at that youth group that you uh, run? Well, I've got to have it somehow, you know, teach them about Jesus. <laughs> hey, Some sniffing glue. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. I'm just like you. I like. I like. I love Sheeran. I like yeah. singing songwriters. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Swifty. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but you know who's the Taylor Swift of his day? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you know what? When I think of Taylor Swift, um, you know, she uh, she pays her people very well and gives them bonuses and stuff. And I kind of think, you know, maybe she's thinking to herself, WWJA. What would Jesus do? Yeah. <laughs> it's the kind of hip lingo you've got to use these days. Yeah. 
Um, Trick the kids into organised religion. Is it true? <laughs> is it true that I've heard that there's um, there's a property developer who's coming to try and buy the youth centre and close it down, and to raise money, you're doing um, a show for the local community where yeah. you're all on roller skates. You want to put a show, do a sort of Starlight Express, but you know, not um, you know, like, not affiliated with a copyright or anything. Nice. Let's see, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber. We'll just see, and hopefully, like, just get enough money so that you can buy the buy the place, and yeah, it doesn't just... get developed into condos. Because well, what will happen to those kids now? That's what you got to ask yourself. Where are they going to go? Exactly. Um, <laughs> electric boogaloo. Come with it, Neil Herbert. Electric boogaloo. Um, and so, every other 80s movie ever made. Yeah. I, think, I don't, I don't included, know that they wrote the format or, uh, yeah. Neil Herbert in. Battery's not included. <laughs> These tiny aliens. Um, I can't really... I, I watched that. I remember watching that film when I was, like, six or seven. Does anything happen? Is it just like a load of... Well, they're in, like, an, a, 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 like, a place which has been condemned, aren't they? Like a block of flats. I think you might be confused with like Cocoon, because I feel like Jessica no. Tandian, there's like a lot of old Cocoon, people. Cocoon, they're, they're in an old people's home. Cool time, yeah. Whereas, well, I vaguely like Batch not included, isn't it? They're isn't like Jessica little Tandian aliens. That? They're like tiny ones. Hmm. They're like little, uh, little like fellas. Yeah. Like flying around, sort of slightly roboty. I don't know who's in it or anything, but I think... But don't take them all to their home planet at the end. No, I think the aliens help them put on a show so they can buy the property from a developer. Ruthless property developer, yeah, so they can't turn it I think so. slum. Yeah. I think so, yeah. So then kick all the people out who have, I have my kids in this apartment, I don't want to go anywhere. The building's part of the family. That kind of stuff, probably. Yeah. Um. Anyway, a nice. spokesman for Lancashire Police said... We have checked local zoos and farms, but nothing seems to be missing. It is very bizarre. We have handed it over to the RSPCA to investigate because we cannot be fucked. I mean, there's only so much you can do with that in there, to be fair. It doesn't sound like they've done much. Well, they check with the local farms and zoos. I don't think they ever did that. No, they didn't bother. Oh, yeah, who did you call? Don't worry about it. Don't need to know about that. So, apparent sightings of the animals not native to the UK, have been on the increase in recent years. I don't know it's not native to the UK. Well... No, it is yet, do we? I don't know, exactly. The, the daily fail. Could be a what's-it deer, although the Montjuic deer, was, was that, mm. that was imported, was it? I think it was saying, wasn't, wasn't native. I don't know where it's from now. Yeah, I don't go. know. I can't answer that. Fair enough. I don't know enough about it. Panthers are occasionally reported, with police marksmen called in last year after a farmer said he saw a large black cat on his land in Anglesey, North Wales. It's a cat now. At RA... No, he's just saying that here's some other examples. Oh, right, the sort of things that people are saying. Yeah. At RAF St Morgan in Cornwall, three members of staff spotted a large black cat, similar to a puma or a panther, through their night vision lenses. Also in Cornwall, as we've mentioned before, Neil, the infamous beast of Bodmin is still believed to be roaming uh, the okay. farmland, killing sheep and lamb. So experts at Chester Zoo were baffled after being shown the drawing of the beast of Green Drive. A spokesman last night said, it doesn't look like any mammal currently alive. It looks more like a mythical beast to us. So, now, Neil... I am going to read from darktales.blog, which I think we've used before. Okay. And I'll see if I can find who wrote this. No. So the image by this Sam... So type in the Beast of Green Drive, and the image uh, certainly by this... I have. It looks a bit like the... Go on, go for it. Yeah, no, I'm just going to say that sort of green creature. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, it's odd looking. If that's, I mean, I, I wonder how much artistic license has been taken. I would take quite a lot. It's sort of, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so it's got kind of like a, a dog's face with like sort of ears, very long which legs. Are, ears are more like at sort of ants and tenors. Yeah, 
uh, little tail, very muscular. Wiry. Wiry, it's yeah. quite big, but I'm not really sure about size. So, the cryptid that became known as the Beast of Green Drive is a relatively new addition to the collection of strange creatures said to originate in Lancashire. Also referred to as the Beast of Lytham, the animal was sighted by a number of residents over a period of nearly a month in May 2005, before apparently disappearing again. An additional sighting in 2007 led one led to one possible explanation for the identity of the beast, but questions still remain. Do you know what? I reckon they're going to go, oh, it's a fox with mange or something, because that's what they say about everything. Yeah, well, it's... Despite the size being different and everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because they're trying to keep it hidden from us now. Keep the them all their genetic experimentation program. Where mm-hmm. they're, they're merging man with deer. Underneath the Blackpool Ballroom, yep. There's a they they all, take all the, being funded by Strictly Come Dancing. They take the sweat of the dancers. That's yeah. why it's got such long limbs. They take well, the sweat from the dancers and they cross it with a wolf. And some of Bruce Forsyth's DNA injected. Oh Jesus! That's why it's also got a prominent chin <laughs> and, a, and a pronounced sense of patter. Yeah, and it's been married to three Miss Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the crypt. Uh, I read that bit. Sorry. Um, so, Lytham is a small coastal town on the edge of the Irish Sea, mm. part of the wider Flight Coast conurbation that also includes Blackpool. Best known outside of Lancashire as a host of golf's Open Championship, Lytham is a particularly affluent and desirable area to live. Certainly, compared to its larger neighbour. Oh, this on Blackpool. Well, like I said, it has got um, terrible yes, poverty does. issues. Yeah, that's true. Green Drive is a private road that runs close to the edge of the town, crossing oh, farms and woodlands before finishing at Green Drive Golf Club. Not to be confused with its more illustrious neighbour, Royal Lytham. How oh, could anyone do so, darling? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps uh, they don't know. Are you golf at the Green Drive Golf Club? Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. it's the Royal Lytham. You went to Green Drive? No, no, we're at Royal Lytham. We're already on the third. Must look, remember. Hmm. Oh, yeah, well, look, I'll call ahead and we can meet you in the 19th for a Bloody Mary afterwards, and then maybe we can close this fucking deal. Ta-ta! <laughs> Don't know what that was. <laughs> the um, dense woodland was reported in 2005 to be the home of the strange creature, described by witnesses as being around the side of a border collie, but with large ears, pale fur, strangely enlarged mouth, and unusual loping gait. Yeah, fox of mange. <laughs> yeah. They also, you know, as soon as they start loping, you know you've got mange. Yeah, you know you've got mange, yeah. One of the first eyewitness accounts was from local woman, Sarge Sturrock, who spoke to local paper the Lytham St Anne's Express to describe the encounter and she long blah 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 we've seen that yeah so this is the one you mentioned originally yeah. I so, think it's now so, just repeating the same um... so the creature reportedly stood up and calmly watched her for several minutes prompting her to call a dog over and put it on its lead and then it fucked off um, so then there's something about the Doctor Who guy uh so the story quickly gathered attention from national papers. And more we don't recall this. this. Hmm. Well, we don't get we don't take the papers anymore, do we now? No, that's true. Well, you take the, the you take the FT. I take the FT. Yeah, it's not going to be in there, is it? And I take Spotlight. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, socialist worker. Socialist worker. Yeah. Um. Uh, So, the story quickly gathered attention from national papers and more witnesses came forward to describe their own sightings of the beast. Uh, One woman who claimed to have seen the animal in the field said it looked like a dog and a hare, but definitely not belong to either species. Based illustrator Sam Sheeran produced the illustration and the staff said, whatever, it doesn't look like nothing. Well, yeah, it doesn't look like anything, that, that picture. I don't, yeah. Suspicious, it's very imaginative, but uh, suspiciously, no photographic evidence of the beast has ever emerged. Well, I suppose if you're out and walking your dog, got your phone. If you've got your phone, you could try and 
snap picture. I mean, there is quite a few sightings. That is interesting. Um, I wonder if it wasn't just a stray dog or something, but who knows? Maybe stray dressed dog, it up. Like in, yeah, like in a bumblebee costume or something. Yeah. <laughs> so two popular theories were put forward to explain this beast. The first was that the animal was misidentified Munjak deer. Yep. They're originating in South Asia. Mount Jacks are now a common invasive species across the UK. And the owner of nearby Lytham Hall was known to have imported a small herd for the grounds a century earlier. Notably, Mount Jack possess a pair of pronounced uh, upper canine tusks that protrude from their mouth. Not seeing that. Yeah, um, I mean, it does look weird, but it doesn't look like the description that they've had. I mean, I, no. I like the fact because, but they, there was a, a herd at Lytham Hall, wasn't there? They're saying here. But this is weak source for me because it says uh, that it has upper canine tusks that protrude from their mouth, possibly accounting for the descriptions that like it to a monster. <laughs> yeah. No, it just has like little little canines that stick out. It could be that the small population had survived from that original herd. A wild muntjac uh, from the wider invasive population is also a possibility. However, they are only slowly spreading north from a stronghold in southern England. Yeah, I like the use of the term stronghold. It just imagine them all in a castle or something. Yeah, that's so right. East Grinstead. Yeah, East Grinstead. That's, that's yeah, very, their own religion. The muntjac be- religion. It, weren't muntjacs heavily linked to the Rosicrucians? Well, so yeah, an opus day. Yeah, so maybe like, like so. You know. taking it village by village with the good word. Um, so, uh, and while increasingly common today, it's unlikely one of reached Lancashire by 2005. The second theory, oh, here we go, is that the creature was a fox, with the unusual descriptions being the result of serious case of mange. Wah, 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 wah. It's what they say everything is. Maybe it is. A skin disease caused by parasitic mites. Mange, mange causes hair loss and serious skin infections. After a new sighting of the beast was reported in 2007, a fox with mange was captured by RSPCA inspectors after being found by a local woman in her home. The elderly animal was put to sleep on the advice of vets due to the severity of its condition, and local papers rewarded the case as being the sad demise of the beast. But that was in 2007, two years after all the other stuff. So yeah. that, I don't think so. No, maybe not. And it, I mean, when he first read the description of Fox, it sounded like it could be to me. So they're like the snout and the, the big mm. ears and things like that. But like a bloody and they do loll up a bit, don't they, Foxes? Mm. So while the animal described by the RSPCA collections officer was the oldest fox he had ever encountered, meaning it was easily old enough to have been around two years prior, such a severe case of mange means it would have been unlikely to have survived that period of time. Even if the mange had become more severe, one would assume it must have been fairly advanced at the time of the early sightings for so many witnesses to fail to identify it as a fox. So, so it was, um, let's have a look here, see if there's anything else to say about this. Is it trace does... gone wrong? I mean, yeah. That, they that's... train animals to, uh, to find, like, strap missiles on dolphins or whatever. <laughs> certainly do now. They, um, they replace kangaroos. Coyotes to do bomb disposal. Yep, they replace kangaroos from arms with circular saws. Don't they? It's well known. Use them in Vietnam. Uh, so here we go. Um, so so here's another. So this is uh, the skeptic. This is by Andy Owens. Uh, so someone said it's a uh, month jack deer, but another reader who contacted the skeptic suggested a different possibility. Hmm. Diane Heaton recalled that her father lost his pet greyhound at snowy in two thousand and eight. I wondered if that was the identity of the beast. Well, she lost re- it in 2008. It was three years after the sighting. So. No, 2003, sorry. Oh, oh, 2003, okay, yeah. She wrote, My dad has never stopped looking for his dog and has left bones and food which have always been eaten. Could this beast have been snowy? It probably wouldn't look much like a greyhound now, left out all alone. 
dogs uh, should have grown several coats to keep himself warm. It'd be interesting to hear from some of the eyewitnesses to see if it could have been the dog. So the only thing with that, because they do lollop greyhounds. Yeah, well, well you know. You that sounds quite likely, but it's, but it's the ears still. That's... The ears, and they not really look like collies, do they, greyhounds? But it's the size of a collie. Than yeah, I suppose, people. yeah. Oh, yeah, it could be a stray dog, couldn't it? Um, yeah. So... Um, be fucking anything, let's be honest. So the skeptoid uh, at the end says, however, there was always... Feet. So they think it was... Um, they think it was the fox, perhaps. I don't think it was... I think the greyhound sounds more likely. So no, there were always... I'll, I'll, I'll there go team were, fox with mange. There are always folks who won't accept a prosaic explanation as illustrated yeah, by exactly. various paranormal Chris, websites. Oh no, it's got to be an alien on which the Which have featured the story. And for Ooh, them, at least... compelling the, descriptions. Yeah, well, I don't think it's an alien. It can't be a fox with alien. mange. It doesn't look no, like a fox with mange. It's got to be a genetically engineered coyote from Atlantis. Look, now, if you're naive enough to think that from they have... 51... If, yeah, if you don't think in Area 51 they've been breeding yeah, greyhounds... The Indians haven't been breeding greyhounds to turn them into weaponised... Bro- they've been bullies. breeding greyhounds with um, praying mantai yeah. in, order, you. in order to to speak to the aliens from planet Nubaru. This is how the government are allowed to cover under, these up. Under the, under the uh, orders... Of the people of the lost civilization of Flontar, then you know I don't know where we meet halfway, Neil. To be honest, who because who lived in the mountain you're California? close-minded, huh? Who were those ones who lived in the mountain in California? They were Atlantean. There was something else. The Lemurians. Oh, Lemurians. Yeah. No, they they no, no, they're child be. they're child's play compared to the people of Flontar. I just wondered maybe if a, a Lemurian could have gotten to playing with a Mormon or something. I mean, I'm to East Grinstead. Started to you know go yeah. to Blackpool and stopped off in for a bit of golf. These are all these are all very very possible, all plausible theories. Yeah, all very plausible. Um, but Neil, I think that really that's about all there is to say about this. Well, crazy it might fella. be a bit of a shorter one this week, but hey, hey ho, that's well. Last week was long. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's not. There's not much else about it. Uh, um, squeeze the blood from a stone, Chris. It is what it is. I can try. Th- three people saw a vague dog I would, sighting. I would, I would say, to an extent, we have squeezed blood from a stone. Yeah. So, no. So, blood be damned. <laughs> let's go through our scoring system. Nil. So, spookiness. It's not that spooky, is it? Really? Um, no, I don't know, Neil. Is it? I is won't it? find out until you tell me. No, I, I don't. You know, I look to you to know how to feel about things. It did me attack anyone or kind of like, it's only the size of a sort of collie. It's, um, or it just sounds like a stray dog or something. To be, the problem is it's quite vague in terms of, I mean, I suppose it's the idea that it's a bit of a hybrid of different things, but none of them terribly scary. It didn't sort of attack anyone. It didn't seem massively menacing. Um, I don't know. It, it, someone's just seen something slightly odd. I mean, like, maybe they well, have a few too many Several genetics. people. Yeah, I mean, there have been quite a few. That's the thing; it's not one it? person. I mean, yeah, it, it it could, yeah, maybe it, maybe it is a, maybe it's something unexpected, like a Montjack deer or whatever. But yeah, it's not terribly spooky for me. It's not, it's not done anything particularly horrifying or, you know, scared any of these people. So it's going to be a two for me, I'm afraid. Two, fair enough. Um, yeah, I think it probably sounds like the greyhound to be honest. <laughs> but, um, but no, it seems to be quite passive. It was just like the fact that it was looking at the woman and the dog means like that, you know, and didn't run away until she came close to it. Makes me feel like it's probably domesticated. Mm. Like it probably is the like or a hound of hell, you know, one or the other. Or a hound of hell, yeah. But then it would have not not run off. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It would have torn their throats out. Yeah, or it would have um, blackmailed them, as we yeah. found out with Smile Dog, the hellhound. Yeah. You know, with its. Patience. Yeah, I was going to say he got got a lot more going on with his attacks. So. Yeah, well, with his murder skills. Oh yes, um, that's what we get. But no, it doesn't sound particularly scary to me either. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go two now um, because I just do what you tell me. Yeah, uh, believability. That time. So I believe that these people have seen something uh, that seemed out of the ordinary to them. 
There's no real claims like crazy. Claims. They're just saying it was like this, but like this, but I don't know what it was. So it's vague no, enough description. Yeah, it's hard to say. There's no real big, there's no big claims coming out of this um, other than they didn't know what it was. I don't believe the illustration, but then that's just something. No. I mean, he might have been having a bit of fun in fairness. Who knows? Well, he shouldn't be having a bit of fun if he's yeah, taking it, it seriously. To the RS, if it to the RSPCA or it's Chester Zoo. Zoo. 14 times. I'll take it seriously, son. If you're taking it to Chester Zoo, have got enough on their fucking plate without without you, with the, the amount of times... time waster, have we? Oh, you think it's yeah, funny? Exactly. Yeah, you think it's a laugh. Do you yeah. know how many times the monkeys have rebelled? Do you know what I mean? Slag. Yeah. Um, but I believe people have seen something. Giraffe's believe... getting a late dinner now because of you. <laughs> so I'm wasting a prick. And he's going to try and kick my skull off. <laughs> As giraffes wants when hungry. You stand behind them, but you forget their knees bend the other way. Oh, it's... Bang, uppercut. Down Don't you hide go. up in a tree. <laughs> yeah, it's a cheeky tongue comes after yeah. you. Full spectrum attack. You just can't, you can't <laughs> defend yourself. Um, they, <laughs> giraffes have primacy over the land, the air, and the water. You ever seen Chuck Norris fight a giraffe? You know why? Now you know. Yeah. Exactly. Or Vin Diesel or whatever else you like Arnold's was. Well, it's... Oh, it's come out that he's a sex pest as well, isn't it? Excellent. Which one's um, that? Oh, well, Vin Diesel, yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, by an ex-assistant. Um, not surprised. Um, so, uh, believability, I think people saw something, and I think something was there. Do I think it was something fantastical? Probably not. So, overall, I'm going to leave it at seven. Neil? Yeah, um, vaguely similar. I mean, the, none, none of these are sort of like massively outlandish. They're just quite vague descriptions. Problem is, you just don't don't know what the thing is. But uh, yeah, I think I think yeah, I, I don't think that they're hoaxing. I don't think they've made it up. I think they have seen something that's slightly out of the ordinary. But um, yeah, as you say, it's not well. I don't think really describe it as a devil dog. So I'll give you an A. Actually, I think you know mm. the three very vague sightings of of something that's not that massively mysterious, but. Is that not quite like any conventional animal that you've normally seen? Yeah. Cool. All right, Neil, narrative premise. I think this is another one where it falls down a little bit, like with spookiness. Um, in fact, three of the three might fall down a little bit for me. I think this, it's just a, I saw a weird animal near the golf course, which I'm sure you did. And, well, apparently that was enticing enough for the national press to get involved. Um but it's not like Beast of Bob and Moore has got a bit more going on. It could be like an escape panther or something like that. This is, yeah, I don't know. And then you've got, you know, the whole thing about, oh, it could have come from the zoo. But no, the problem is that nobody's really been able to identify what it is, where it's come from, or exactly what it looks like. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a lot to this. I suppose you could fill it out a little bit. But the problem is there's lots of stories, there's lots of unexpected animals turning up stories. There's just better ones. You um, could do so- like... Um- like um, the journey home or something, where like the dogs get. I can't remember why, but, but it's like... just like Lassie. It's just trying to tell you that little Timmy's fallen down a well, but it looks or, a bit dangy. So, or it's trying to get nobody follows it. It's trying to get like the police or something, or like trying to get attention because yeah. the bloke who owned it is up to some nefarious shit. Yeah, that woman's dad been smuggling canes or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Into yeah, the golf course, yeah. hiding at his golf balls. Perfect crime, isn't it? Perfect crime. Perfect Nobody crime. would have expected this in life. Yeah, people go and collect the golf balls, take it round the back of Life and Green Golf. Just get them all addicted up in Blackpool. Process laugh, it. laughing all the way to the bank. Isn't it? Yeah, Lots. process process the balls in the in the clubhouse. Yeah, no one's looking. Nobody, nobody would suspect when all your London types come up for the open. At Lytham Open, the other one, Royal Lytham, when they yeah. all come up, sell all your, you know, you double your yeah. price, can't you, to all those London types? The media people come up. They put and they'll half turn a the, blind eye to them. They put half a Royal Lytham up there. Up there <laughs> nice. So, you going to give me a number? I've forgotten, <laughs> forgotten what I was saying <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, again, went on tangent. Um, yeah, there's not loads here, so I'll give it a three. Three. Um, yeah, there isn't much. Like some people saw something that was probably a dog. So yeah. I'll give it a three. <laughs> um, so coming out there, yeah. <laughs> we, we could have really done this in a ten-second podcast. There you go. 
Well, I know, but it's it's a but test to see how would that be fun. Of... How would that be fun, listener? Exactly. Um, so it's my turn now. How has this been fun? Says listener. Oh, yeah, exactly. I was thinking <laughs> that myself. <laughs> um, so reach. Uh, not very big. Well, no, I don't want to hear. I would imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's a the famous life and devil beast? <laughs> well, it's on a Daily Mail website, which is the largest in the world. I mean, yeah, it's the largest in the world because it caters with a lot of shit like this. It's yeah. volume, volume rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine. Well, I, I don't mean, think this one went. Nil, well, right? nil, I don't know if you've heard, but we're the largest podcast of our other by, 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 by volume. volume. Yeah, and that's so we're we, clearly going for us and the Daily Mail are yeah. very much using the same. Well, the two succeeding same system. Uh, so. Um, Reach, not massive. Uh, we'll probably never hear of it again, and that might not be a bad thing, so I'll give it a two. <laughs> we give it a one out of spite now. Don't know about this one. <laughs> one out of spite. I don't know. Just, I mean, they say it got into the national press, but I don't think there's any, too much evidence that it's... Yeah, it's very... There's... But yeah. So, so overall... Oh, nil. I hate life and devil duck. <laughs> not impressed. So, um, that's an overall 28. Uh, so, quite small. But, hey, last week's was... Was quite big. So. Again, you want to see some outliers, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, quite a few big, big run of things in the forties, didn't we? So, yeah, Ugh, horrible. Ugh. <laughs> I hate statistics. That's the way the bell curve works. I don't like it. Um, so, if you want to um, send us pictures of your dog, then please do at uh, dot learning dot podcast yeah. at gmail dot com. Right. Like and subscribe and comments and all that, as we said at the start. And if you want to follow our Twitter, where I do tweet from about every three days. You got the flame war with any celebrities yet? Huh? You got the flame war with any celebrities yet? I um, <laughs> I attempted to start one with David Icke. Yeah. Um, but I it, did I you think, give some beef? I think he's too used to it. Yeah, so he just there. ignored me. Wolf ducks back. Yeah, that like, case. yeah, probably. He's just going for a lizard. <laughs> Block. Yeah. <laughs> Mute. Lizards. <laughs> um, no, but no flame wars yet. But I might try. I might try a bit harder. See if we I don't know. It's not really... Get it's some not really beefs my, going on. Not really in my personality to start some beefs with people, apart from builders on Sundays. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's it then. Um, so you know all you need to know about life and peace, and you are very welcome for that. And I will yes. see you... Same time Thursday next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's an urban legend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get me some grip. Oh, I'd give me best. Why the why, please, John? Why, Steve, you so red. You won't be a monkey. Get it, yeah.